Lee in Washington. You're on the air. Go ahead. Hey, Alex Jones. I've been waiting a long time to talk to you. Anyways, I just wanted to say, um, I remember back in the day, uh, Y2K, Bill Cooper incident, and you smoking to eat me, Joe Rogan. Now you lost your kids, and I'm so happy about that, dude. If I ever seen you in real life, I would smack the shit out of you. I uh, would we'll delay that because we can't have cussing. I've never taken DMT. We'll do it live! Trigger. I can't really identify the, the systems exactly. Um, I can tell you that they were at least 40 to 50 years uh, in the future compared to everybody else. My God. This technology, uh, just mind blowing things. Wow. <laughs> Isn't that strange? We were talking about the president, and all of a sudden we got cut off. I don't want to brag, but by myself, I killed the guy. Well, today I'm going to see you with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we probably would go into the trance. You would not even know about the secret societies. You would not even know about the Illuminati. You would not know anything about the world conspiracy. No. <laughs> We're sorry. You have reached the European Union. You are no longer in service. And welcome to a brand new life, to a brand new day, all the way from the wastelands of California. My name is Michael. I look forward to once again serve you those conscious coma-inducing vibrations. First-time listeners, turn on, tune in, and drop out. This is a different kind of show, a place where we don't feel so alone. Let us chase away the light no matter what you at home choose to believe. I do admire you for your curiosity. Live and direct right now on the TuneIn Radio app. Search End of Days and you'll find the 24-7 network. Go to michaeldeacon.com for your preferred choice of platform to listen to the podcast rendition of this program. Tonight my guest is Mark Sargent. He started his career playing computer games professionally in Boulder, Colorado. Then, in 2014, he looked into what is no doubt the most ridiculous conspiracy ever called the flat earth theory and through extensive research discovered that it wasn't so laughable after all early in 2015 he released a series of youtube videos titled flat earth clues which the possibility of our human civilization actually being inside a truman show like enclosed system and how it's been hidden from the public since 1956 once again, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for allowing me into your hearts and into your minds. Here we are again on a night like this. Welcome back to another dose of the Michael Deacon program. I'm feeling illuminated once again. Here we are under pale moonlight. Yes, this is a special Flat Earth Friday edition of the Michael Deacon program. For those who are new in attendance, let me... Take a moment to reintroduce myself to you. My name is Michael. I am the host and producer of this very unique program. This is a call-in show. Please feel free to call in whenever your heart desires. I am willing to talk to you for better or for worse. I'll only be answering one line today. That number is 760-332-8947. Let's hear those sweet little voices. 760-332-8947. You can add me on Skype. That's end of days. Mike with the letter Y and not the letter I. It's finally happening, folks. Let's get down to brass tacks here and bring on our first guest and only guest. Mark, are you alive and kicking? <laughs> so far, so good. Very nice. Thank you for being here this evening with all of us. I do appreciate your time greatly. Yeah, no, pleasure to be here. Yeah, how are you, by the way? Everything is going smooth, I hope. Oh, uh, yeah. Been, been busy as of late. No, no complaints. Better busy than bored. Oh, this, okay. This community is always busy. That's a good sign then. Yeah. By the way, what's going on in that photo of yours there on Skype? That's, oh, the Skype photo. That is me in the Queen's Temple in Egypt talking to some Egyptian children. Oh, nice. Who, they, whenever they see anyone from the United States or basically anyone that speaks English, they want to, you know, they want to practice their English on you. Mm, that so must have been, yeah, that photo must have been around the time when you took the other photo of you in front of the pyramids there. Yep. Yep. I went over there to uh, just kind of check it out. I always said that um, 
Uh, I would go and, and check out the pyramids for myself and see what my take was on it. You know, wh- what, what my first impressions, you know, who built them and what right. the whole, and they were impressive. They do not disappoint by any stretch, especially if you, you don't know anything about engineering at all. It's, it's, it's incredible. But then you see the city and you go, okay, whoever the descendants that were that live in Cairo now, they had nothing to do with. Uh, with whoever built this thing, it's it's just way too massive and way too in, intriguing. So, isn't there a Pizza Hut around the corner there? Oh well, Cairo backs right up to it. Cairo literally, oh, no. you don't see that. They take the shots around it, so you don't see. But on one side, the city of Cairo literally backs right up next to the pyramids, <laughs> and they do that. They do 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 that deliberately. So the buses, you know, they can you know put the hotels right there. Right. They, the, you, when you go from your hotel. To the pyramids, sometimes, I mean, the bus ride is, what, five minutes long. So, and it's a huge tourist trap. But hey, anyway, it was still fun. I do yeah. not regret the trip. It was a, it was a, it was a blast. That's hilarious. Now, yeah. Mark, l- let's get into your background here before we get into anything else. Walk us through everything. I understand you were some sort of professional gamer. I was back in the, back in the day before professional gamers was, was even really a thing. I won a, I was always, always, uh, ever since I was young, and I won a worldwide computer pinball tournament in the mid 90s. And one of the publishers that did games, in fact, it was rare, almost all the gaming publishers were in California at the time. And there's a few in New York, but most of them are in Southern California, as they are still today. But there were a couple out in Boulder, Colorado. Go figure. And one of them brought me out there and hired me. And I'd never been to Boulder. I'd never been to Colorado, period. And it was a beautiful place, although I was from the Northwest, so I missed the water. And I played games there for this small publishing house, which was a blast. They, the, uh, they were a Mac developer, primarily. They were a Macintosh house. And so I got to go to Mac World Boston and Mac World San Francisco and E3. And I was the only, really the only person in the company that played games. Everybody else did other things, you know, marketing, yeah, design, and all sort of crap. And I actually, you know, played games, and then I, I had a group of friends, a group of super nerds in Boulder that also played games, and that's what we did. And then after that company finally folded, I had a choice of either going to California and trying my luck out there or staying in, in Colorado, but it was still a great town for tech. And so I taught proprietary software for time and attendance companies for the better part between the gaming company and the software companies. Uh, I was there for 20 years oh, wow. and yeah, taught that. It was, it was fantastic. Loved it. And during that entire time I was into conspiracies and just about every conspiracy you can think of. I looked into it. I wouldn't necessarily call myself a, like a, a Charlie from 20, the movie 2012, Woody Harrelson's yes. character. You know, Understood. Super yeah. It's eccentric character. But I was into conspiracies and I thought I'd seen it all. And then in the summer of 2014, I just, literally out of boredom, I figured, oh, what, what haven't I looked at? Yeah, it's like, oh, lizard people again. No, Bilderberg. Yes. No. By the way, Mark, uh, can I, can I just stop you there and quickly ask you? Yeah. How yeah. about your upbringing? Did you, did you have a religious upbringing, Mark? Yeah. Yeah, I did. I was raised born again Christian. Grew, I mean, just not, it was, I did have to do all of the things that, that you can imagine. So I went to vacation Bible school mm-hmm. during the summer. Went to Camp Malibu up in Canada. Oh, one you, did, year. you did everything then. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. A youth mm-hmm. group. I mean, it wasn't just Sundays. Let's put it that way. It was, it was numerous days a week. And even the sports teams I played on, because I was one of those geeks that also did athletics. Uh, they were. It was. It was a very heavy Christian community in the in Whidbey Island where I'm from, and that carried over. But I fell away from that when I went to college, and you know, like a lot of people, it's like, what? There's there's more to you know, because I grew up in a very rural island setting up in the northwest of the United States near near Canada, and. That I fell away from that when I went to college, and then when I got into conspiracies, even more. They corrupted like, what, what, what? They corrupted you your. Believe? They corrupted your mind in college. Well, Is that what you, happened? you're exposed to so many things. What was that? What was that line from uh, Family Guy? It says. There's a time and a place for everything, mm-hmm. and that place is college. Understood. Yes. And I did. I. I hear you. Know, it's okay. In fact, I what I try to tell people because I, I I got in a lot of trouble in college. Uh, if you're not getting in trouble in college, you're not trying hard enough. That's and, hilarious. Uh, it's true. It's true. So 
I did the conspiracy thing in Boulder while I was doing the software stuff, and then 2014 got into, looked into, are, are you, do you want me to kind of get into how I kind of delved into the flat earth thing, or are we just doing kind of background? Just background, but yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll dive into that here. Oh, okay. Well, anyway, so that's, that's what I did. And so I stayed in Boulder up until the point where I got into this, and then this changed everything I thought of and everything I wanted to, changed my goals. Changed my outlook on life and mm-hmm. uh, never your, looked back. Your paradigm just changed completely after this. Then, yeah, my my priority list. In fact, if you, if anyone that's really gotten into this, it, it, I've seen it time and time again. You, since you're looking at the world completely differently, I mean, it's really like you're putting on a, a set of those goggles from uh, the sunglasses from the movie They Live. With oh, Roddy yes. Piper, uh, <laughs> right. that's really what happens. Once you do that, you're you're just not you're just not caring about the same things. Now it's like okay, now that's a whole new whole new chapter, and that's where I where I've really been leading at this point. Yeah, so it seems like the flat Earth theory is one of those theories that has just blown up. In the last couple, yeah. you know, it's blown up in the last oh, couple yeah. of years. The, yeah, the flat earth and the Mandela effect, is, those two are the most popular uh, conspiratorial oh, yeah. Yeah, topics the, in the past few years. Yes. And it's, mm-hmm. it's been nutty. I'm a big statistics nut. Uh, I, I'm what, do you, Mark, you, you basically have investigated this further than I have, obviously. Mm-hmm. How, what are the origins of, of the flat earth theory? Obviously, I understand. The original concept, but who exactly got this so popular over the internet? That's what I'm wondering. Well, it was kind of a community effort. There was one guy that was talking about it. In fact, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you how I got into it. And it, yeah, go ahead. Mm-hmm. Back in summer 2014, I was just fishing around the internet, and there was a video recommended to me about how flight routes were screwed up in the southern hemisphere. And he didn't make sense. And it was done by this German guy. And I go, okay, that's interesting. I, I'm watching the video, and it's in German, but I get I get the diagrams and the, and the little graphs and animations. And he was basically saying that when you're flying anywhere from any in the, anywhere in the south to anywhere in the south, like Africa to South America or South America to Australia, anywhere down there, he goes, he goes, the routes are all wrong. They don't make any sense. He goes, they they're they're double and triple the distance they should be, and they're going way above the equator. In fact, some of them are going almost due north to refuel, but they're not picking up any people. They're just going up there and then coming back down. And he goes, and at the, it wasn't that long of a video. And I go, okay, that's interesting. He goes, guess what? But here's what kind of, kind of hooked me a little bit. He goes, yes, it doesn't make sense unless the map is flat. And I go, okay. All right. Uh, I'll, I'll watch another one of these. And, and it wasn't a German one. So I'm looking for an American one. And I run to this Canadian, closest thing to it, uh, named Matt Boylan, who tells a story of how he was a contract painter, contract artist for NASA. They hired him out of Montreal, and they had him do kind of photorealistic planetscapes and stuff for little simulations, nothing weird. And he was at this high-level NASA party. He was like 25 at the time. And the power went out, and they were talking about this and that, and people were drinking a lot of wine. He goes, a lot of these people there were high-level NASA tech guys and, and high level NASA mucky mucks. And one of the guys was, was said, yeah, he heard a rumor that GPS doesn't work down in Antarctica. And another guy said, oh, you should send a, send some of your guys down there to confirm it, right? And some spooky guy comes out of nowhere, you know, like a cigarette man, smoking man from X Files type guy. And he goes, well, if you're sending you guys out that far, they're not coming back. <laughs> Matt, you know, wow. Matt, Matt fishing. He's like, Matt, glad wine in hand goes, why wouldn't they be coming back? It's because GPS doesn't work down there. I goes, why doesn't GPS work down there? And he goes, because it's too cold? And the guy goes, no, because it's flat. And then the guy proceeded to take a piece of chalk. I mean, it's a great movie opening. He, and he draws out on this cement tile floor. Basically, he draws out the entire world, how it's laid out. And Matt said that when he was done, he was basically looking at the UN flag, because that's what the UN flag is. You want to know visually what it looks like, just look at the UN flag, You know where the, the North Pole is the center of the, the map center of the flag and the rest of the continents kind of splay outward you know, out out in uh you know organic formation around the outside and what was interesting about that story was that there's one thing that's actually missing on the un flag and that's antarctica antarctica isn't there it's like okay 
this is a good, you know, I got a little tingly sensation. It's going, okay, this is good. I like this. This is like movie of the week stuff, sci-fi, Twilight Zone-y type stuff. But there's no way, we all know that the Earth's a globe, should be able to shoot this sucker down. Because I consider myself not necessarily a, a fast problem solver, but a very creative problem solver. I can I can take routes that other people wouldn't think of. And I spent, I thought I could knock it out in a weekend. And there I sat mm-hmm. in front of the computer six months later. In fact, pushing nine months later in February of 2015. And I said, you know what? I can't do it. I can't, I can't prove it's globe. I, I mean, not without a shadow of a doubt. There's, there's a lot of doubt. There's a lot of things missing. There's a lot of things that should be there on the NASA side. And everyone's sitting, you know, and people are listening to this going, this guy's insane. Everybody knows the space program is, is rock solid and it's all true. And the Americans would never lie about the space program and all this. I'm going, okay. This is where, and this is something new I'll give you, which I haven't really, because I'm working on something for the convention that's coming up in the fall. Oh, I was going to ask you about that later on. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, it's going to be fantastic. Interesting. Just, just in, days in Colorado, correct? No, 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 no. Oh, it's going to no. be in uh, Raleigh, North Carolina. Oh, okay. Yeah, go figure. I got the location um, right. No, no, there. there's meetups. What you're seeing on there, those are those are just regional meetups. Those, oh, there's, oh, that's there's a, like a oh, well, meetup okay. happening in Fort Collins every Tuesday right now. And I'm not even part of that. I'm just doing the promos. People, I told people I to see. look, if you, you want to do a promo, send me when it's going to be. And, and, cause my, the channel's getting bigger and bigger. And I, and so I've done them for Florida. I'm doing one for Texas, Colorado, uh, Washington state, uh, Canada. I'm doing one for Niagara Falls. In fact, I think I just put that one up. I just can't be, I'm just astonished how the popularity of the flat earth theory has taken off. Oh yeah. Well, here's, here's the thing. It, it resonates for some simple reasons. And, and this is the one I'll throw out at you. And that is, if you want to, you know, again, I'm not going to be able to convince you or necessarily your listeners in, in one show and nobody, I don't try to, I don't encourage anybody to try to convince somebody to do it over dinner. Or, you know, don't, don't tell family, you know, size up who you're talking to because it is extremely polarizing. And, Normally, if it was a video call, I'd, I'd hold up a little foam globe in my hand and I'd go, okay, okay, how do you know you're on this globe right here? And eventually people will come back and say, well, we know because of the space program. Sooner or later, you know, if you don't want to deal with the, the scientific stuff, equations and shadows and sticks and stuff, you'll, you'll say, well, the space program, NASA showed us. I go, yeah, but here's the problem. The first photo that NASA ever released of the Earth from space was in 1972. You know, the Apollo 17 shot. We all have seen it. You know, you probably don't know it by name, but you've seen it. it. It's, it's very, very cloudy. The whole world's very cloudy. It shows the bottom part of Africa and all of Antarctica. And the, the next shot, by the way, wasn't even the, the second blue marble shot wasn't even taken until 43 years later. They milked that first shot literally for 43 years. It was one shot. That's all they showed anybody. My question is before that shot, how did you know? And I know you can go, oh, NASA, you were still up there in the 60s. I'm going, fine, fine. We'll go all the way back to the inception of NASA in 1958. How did you know before NASA was founded? Because it's not like you just woke up one day in the, in the late 50s, early 60s, and we, we knew the Earth was a globe. We've known for 20-something generations. We've known uh, for 400 years and change before NASA that it was a globe. So how did you know? And eventually they're going to say the words that I wait for, and they'll say, well, science told us. I go, that's right. Science told you. They didn't show you. They told you. This isn't like everything else that you can prove in your life, like water is wet, fire burns. You drop something, it falls to the floor. These are things you can test right now. When it, com- when it came to the shape of the earth for 400 and something years, that's something you just read in a book. In fact, not only did you read it a book, but everybody read it a book. Nobody could get up high enough to take a look at the Earth until nineteen, until late 1950s, early 1960s. So the question then became, then came, turned to this. It's like if for some reason they got up there and they realized it wasn't exactly what they've been pushing to into classrooms you know, since you're six years old for 20 generations, would they tell anybody? And then it gets, there's this uncomfortable pause that you get on the other side. It's like, well, science wouldn't lie to us about anything like that. They'd, they'd yes. come play and go, would they? Would they? Because you gotta remember, that goes against science. People protect their own. Institutions protect their own. Governments, corporations, I mean, things like Enron happened. You know, yeah, don't tell me that right. the big groups don't lie. Yeah, see, that's, that's where the conspiracy comes in about NASA. And yes. have they 
faked footage before? Have oh. they have they lied to us before? Well, yeah, because when I was doing this, and that's yeah, as I was building this in my head, because you know, again, I came from a gaming background, a software background, and so I was going, okay, if I had to build this, build the world, which I didn't, you know, it's like oh, we obviously we didn't build this world, somebody else built it. And of course, that leads into a whole other thing. So how do you keep it? How do you hide the world from the people that are living in it? How do you keep it a secret? Let's say, for example, you find, let's say that the powers that be, I don't care what group it is, Bilderbergs, Rothschilds, uh, Trilateral Commission, take, take your pick, doesn't really matter. Uh, Illuminati, it doesn't, it doesn't really right. matter. What, one of these groups had the old maps, but until you have the technology to actually figure it out for yourself, what do you really know? So as I'm doing the research, I noticed that they seem to be looking for something from the early 1920s up until the mid-1950s with an American admiral, uh, the fact that the youngest admiral in the history of the United States Navy, Admiral Byrd. Admiral Byrd, yes. That he figured out during one of his, well, his last mission, 1955-1956, the um, Operation Deep Freeze down in Antarctica, because he'd been down there for 30 years looking for something. And my supposition was that he found it. That he found some sort of edge of, you know, some outer marker of the world. And it wasn't like the, the like the coastline of Antarctica is the end of the world. No, I'm talking mm -hmm. about thousands and thousands of miles inland, way further than the map should allow, is some sort of barrier. And when he found this, the governments of the United States and the Soviet Union, because they were the only relevant uh, surviving powers after World War II was over, they had to make a decision. And that is, okay, do we tell the public? How do we do we you know do we even broach this? How can we use can we use this to our advantage, or we do we let the public freak out potentially? And at that point, they made these sweeping things. NASA was formed in um, 1958, uh, shortly after the United States and the Soviet Union started atomic wep weapons testing vertically, right. where they just fired atomic weapons straight up for four years, you know, nonstop at what what they were shooting at, you know what they were trying to break through. And then there was this fictitious space race, which had to happen. You basically, and, and during all these, I mean, these, all these things happened at a very short amount of time, which was the atomic weapon testing, NASA was formed, the space race, 1959, the Van Allen belts were, were uh, announced by NASA employee Van Allen, scientist. And then in, um, the same year that the Van Allen radiation belts were announced. You know, it's interesting that you mentioned that. Just mm -hmm. let me, no, no, Pause you for a second here. I'm sure you've seen that video of astronauts talking about the Van Allen belt and how we haven't been able to get past it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You saw yeah, that, right? The, oh, oh, many times. There's, in fact, there's so many different references to what it. What was and for that? For those of you who yeah, don't know your, mm -hmm. go ahead. Don't know your basic astronomy. The Van Allen belts are supposedly these super thick, de deadly belts of radiation announced in 1959. But what I think happened was they didn't know enough about radiation to make general statements like that. So they said, okay, super bad radiation belts never should go up there. And then, of course, Kennedy in 1960 says, uh, oh, yeah, we're going to do a, a moon program. We're going to go. <laughs> and so Van Allen, they had to go back to Van Allen, you know, the press, and say, hey, how are you guys getting past this? He goes, oh, we're just going to go real, real fast. We're just going to floor it. That's our answer. To him. Oh, okay. So, but with, with what shielding? Because radiation, we know this now, Radiation, you can really only shield yourself with the exception of water, but that takes a lot of water, um, is lead and gold. And, and gold is twice as heavy as lead, and both are very, very dense metals. And when you look at the specs on the entire Apollo program, they didn't use any shielding at all. It's, it's, no, it's nowhere there. There's aluminum, some plastic. Yeah, that's basically it because you had to make it as light as possible. You had to make it like an airplane and because you don't want to put an anchor on the top of a rocket. No, of course and, not, yeah. So here they went round trips, not just one way, round trips, supposedly through the Van Allen belts, if you believe the story, uh, Apollo 8 all the way through Apollo 17. I know 9 doesn't necessarily count because supposedly it never left Earth's orbit, but it doesn't matter because the whole thing was fake. Nobody died. Nobody got radiation poisoning. Nobody got cancer. I mean, nothing bad ever happened to these guys. The, the capsules were put in the Smithsonian. They should be ticking like a, you know, the Geiger counter should be just pegged scale high. None of this happened. And then when you look into, when you look into it further, you guys want, and you think, oh, that's just, you're speculating. Okay, fine. You want, you want something fun to look at? Look at this. 
go into Google, type in Orion Trial by Fire. That is the Mars program, current Mars program right now that's supposedly happening as a NASA video that they made back at the end of 2014, not that long ago, and where they say that the first capsules that they're going to use for the Orion project, they're going to test, are going to be unmanned because they can't figure out how to solve the deadly Van Allen radiation belt problem. Mm. And you're watching this, and, and they're very specific. It's not like they say it in a glancing way. They use special doomsday music and weird little graphics. Like, you know, they're showing that the Van Allen belts are really horrible. And right. I and, and say, okay, I mean, it's the trap question. So you have to ask a scientist. In fact, I called out um, uh, Stanton Friedman on that one because he goes, oh, well, they're you? just not that, not that deadly. Yeah, all right. There's, I'm going, really? Because NASA thinks they're deadly. So one of two things. Either they're super deadly and you can't get past them. But if if that's the case, then how did you get past them in the 60s, 50 years earlier? How did you get past them with all your astronauts and nobody even got sick? How did that happen? It's because they never went. They just buy it. They just glossed over it and hoped that nobody would ever notice. And as again, I'm, as I'm looking into more and more of these things, because eventually, you know, people have to lean on the space program. Just about everybody that, that starts out in the flat earth thing, they try to debunk it. And as they're trying to debunk it, they lean on the space programs. It doesn't really matter which one it is. I don't care what country you're from. And you're looking for stuff that should absolutely prove it. I mean, look, we're, we're into this thing. It's been two years since I made the clues. And this thing just keeps getting bigger and bigger and it's bigger. It's insane. No I, I mean, yeah. you have people like Bill Nye talking about it. You have I, even, I believe. Neil deGrasse Tyson. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Athletes, actors. Uh, it's Oh, yeah. it's All it's sorts really, of people, right. Heck, the Vatican just brought it up uh, two days ago. You know, it, I'm, start, it, I'm starting to wonder, Mark, if any of these people have seen your videos. I think they Ch- have. Chances but, are it's oh, pretty yeah. up there because, you know, I, I saw that video of, I believe it was uh, Neil Tyson and Joe Rogan, and I almost have the strange feeling they were referring to you. Yeah. I mean, that nobody, it's really interesting because the only guy that was even mentioned in passing when it came to uh, mainstream coverage was Eric Dubay, which is fine, but. It, but I know they watched it. I mean, the, the, even my mirrors, I mean, not just the ones on my channels, the, the heavy, the heaviest hits for flat earth videos are the flat earth clues, but they're not mine. They're not on my channel. Hmm. So because when I initially did it, cause my YouTube channel didn't have any privileges cause it was so new that I could only make 15 minute videos, which is why the clues were. And, and so people were saying, Oh, you should make a playlist. But little did I know since I made all my videos free creative commons license, I gave so many thousands, so many millions of hits away. A, I, that some people took the clues and mashed them all together in, in a simple editor and put it up. One is called They Are Hiding God with the Greatest Lie Ever. And the other one is called Under the Dome Full Documentary. And they both are, one's pushing three million and the other's two and a half. 2.7 or something yeah, like that. Chances are they, they definitely saw your videos. Oh yeah. Yeah. Chance, you know, a lot of people have saw, I've seen they, the videos. They've had and, to, or they know someone who did. Well, it's, I, I will, I won't say that I'm, I'm the biggest flat earther that's out there, but well, what you're I will pretty say big is, proponent, yeah. Well, when it comes to the introductory level, oh yeah, it's all, it's, it's my stuff because people will, will, will look at some of the flatter stuff and say, okay, let me start from the beginning. Where should I go? And then someone will say, oh yeah, I should look at flat earth clues because that's what I initially designed it to be. I boiled it down when I was looking at flat earth. I, Initially, because there weren't, weren't that many people doing it back when I was doing it, I said, okay, it's it's an interesting topic, but it's coming in kind of like a fuzzy radio station. I mean, all I have to do is re- – all I did was really metaphorically just walk up and turn the you know, quarter quarter turn to the right, and the station comes in. And then people are thinking, what's this music? Where, what is that? <laughs> what is happening? Yes. And then what it did was here, – here was the secondary – thing that happened was that and I will take credit for this was that my because my videos were not exactly high production value I mean they were good fine and all that but it wasn't that wasn't ultra polished I was using a free video editor my own voice uh, a simple script that I wrote and, and nothing special my visual effects that I've been working on now I mean, that's just a learning curve but it inspired people other people to make videos so not only did they like the flat earth but they wanted to make their own stuff and, and in fact, I'll, I'll take, I'll, I'll steal Jaronism's thing. 
because he was he's fond of saying he's like once I knew once I saw that Mark Sargent make his videos and I'm going well that guy can make flat Earth videos mm-hmm. I can certainly do stuff and so there was a lot of people that came in and started making their own material because it's like well why not I mean it doesn't take much to get the message the message is simple it's just a question of how you're gonna how you're gonna put it out there and there's so many different people that have uh, that have that have made the effort it's been fantastic and the community has just grown by leaps and bounds now, and I'll give you the numbers real quick, which is when I was looking, if you typed in Flat Earth into YouTube in the beginning of like 2015, you might get 50, it might have gotten like 50,000 active search results. You type it in now, and you got to search now because they've they changed the algorithms a little bit. If you type it in now and sort by upload date, it's at se- this morning, it's like 17.3 million. That's wild. I know. And and you're saying, well, what does that mean? I'm going, okay, well, Donald Trump comes in at 18, uh, Lady Gaga comes in at 16. Uh, you just take your pick, any mainstream topic. Neil deGrasse Tyson comes in at 500,000. Know, we 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 crush him. And you know, Bill Nye, we we make mincemeat of him. I mean, we, and we're the difference is, and I I did a couple of videos, you know, showing the different stats. The difference is, is that we did it with a grassroots movement with basically no marketing dollars whatsoever. And, we, you know, we did this with basically the fan base. And, and let me compare it to one thing real quick, which is we, we, if you're in YouTube, we've all heard of the infamous PewDiePie. Sure. You know, phenomenon. And the guy's got 50 million subscribers. It doesn't matter. He's got a marketing machine behind him. It's, there's no accident there. And he, he's, he'd be the first to say that. And, but when you search, when you search PewDiePie, he's only got five million, five and a half million relevant search results. It's the fan base. It, you know, so there were, so yeah, he's got five and a half million search results, which means there aren't that many people making videos about him. Whereas Flat Earth is just, they're just ravenous. People make, I mean, I myself, as of today, I don't even know my count for sure, but I'm pretty sure I've made over 600 Flat Earth videos. And there's, you know, I'm not alone in that regards. There's a lot of people that have really cranked up. There's 24 seven channels. Yeah, there's, it's pretty wild. And it's, it's it, massive. You know, Chances are, if you even look into YouTube, you'll probably find someone having a debate during mm. one of the live channels. Oh yeah, the, the debates have gotten really where even a few months ago, there's that this that phenomena has really taken off recently. Where you, you know, know even bringing, three, four months bringing up the flat Earth theory is enough to trigger many people into an argument. Yeah, it's because of that polarization, and and you're wondering again. People are listening to this now, and they're probably wondering why they're upset. And, and let me relate a story to when before I even clicked on my first flat earth video, when I was even moving my mouse over to it, and this is how I caught myself. I actually got physically flushed, physically embarrassed to click on the video. <laughs> and I was alone in my, in my apartment. And I'm going, okay, why am I embarrassed? I clicked on weirder stuff on, you know, than this on the internet. We all have. Oh, so yeah. why, why am I embarrassed to click on a flat earth video? And then I, then I, as I got into it, I understood. It's because you've seen the the globe for so long. It is is classic conditioning. When you yes. see a globe in your classroom since you're in first grade or kindergarten or whenever you where you're taught, that globe just sits there. And the glass is, the the globe is in every classroom. When you're going through school, you can't avoid it. And when you get home, oh yeah, you may not have a globe in your house, but you're going to see globe images on television all the time. So you believe in mind control then? Oh, are you kidding? Uh, yeah. I'll give you a quick, I'll give you a quick example. This is, you'll love Go this ahead. one. There was a, you want classic mind control. You don't think it can happen. I was in, it was late eighties, early, nope, nope, it was early nineties. Oh, Mark, let me just tell you, I, I just did a show not so long ago about mind control and people being completely brainwashed. And I said, a, f- uh, a percentage of 65 to at least 75% of people, uh, if not even more, are just Completely brainwashed without oh, yeah. any realization. It, and, and it doesn't, it does not take much, dude. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you ahead. how little it takes. Go ahead. Mark. There was a show back in the late eighties, early nineties called GI Joe. It was an animated cartoon series. We probably all know of it. And what they did was, this was back when Reagan took off the, uh, the advertising restrictions. I don't know if they figured it out on their own. It was just an accident. But what they did was, I think to save money was they used the same animators that they used the cartoon show to make their commercials. And then, they showed those commercials during the show, and then they ran back-to-back shows. So you had two hours of G.I. Joe, right? But 
you also had G.I. Joe commercials running in the gaps. So what happened was, and they called it, I mean, of course, the lawyers have scrubbed most of it now, but it's still out there. It's part of the uh, the Child, not the Protection Act, but there's uh, something else that has to do with media. And I, I got to save it. I've got it somewhere lying around, which is what happened was with the 12 to 13 year olds, they couldn't differentiate when the show ended and the commercial began. So it basically became just one two hour commercial. And it's, and it's not like you were, they were forced to watch it. They wanted to watch it. And so they were engaged. And what happened was it was called the, um, uh, was it called the annoyance factor or the, um, uh, I can't remember the name of it. But what happened was mm-hmm. when they went to the stores with their mothers, you know, the mother's like, no, put that back. No, put that back. We all done that, right? When the kid went for the GI Joe toy and the mother said, put it back, the kid resisted. It violently in some cases, like, no, 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 I'm buying the G.I. Joe, you're buying the G.I. Joe toy. <laughs> and this happened, I mean, it, it, it swept the nation very, very quickly to where they had to, Congress had to step in and they had to pass a whole new, uh, television, uh, set of laws just to cover this because they were basically brainwashing the kids into buying the product. And again, that's how it, in fact, when they were doing studies, they figured out that it takes as little as 45 minutes if the person is engaged in, in whatever progress it is. So don't, don't, don't tell me that people can't be brainwashed without oh, them knowing that no it happens doubt. all the time. Through social media, no doubt. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Well, most people, which is why I don't even turn on the cell phone I'm looking at over here. I, I bought my very first smartphone, uh, two years ago. Oh wow. When very I, recent I, then. Very recent because I realized when, because when I, I was in a college town up in Boulder, Colorado, and I was started to see when I was driving through campus that none of the kids were looking up. They were all looking down. Looking they down. were just walking around right. with their phones and, and they were glued to them. I was going, Oh boy, this is not good. And I remember sitting in a movie theater where all the kids, uh, there was like a group of nine kids in front of me. And they were all on their sm- smartphones and none of them, people say, well, you know, it's what, so what? I'm going, here's the thing. They were all texting each other, but literally they were sitting right next. I was watching, I was watching kids that had their elbows were touching each other and they weren't talking. They were just texting. And I was going, okay, what we, we've taken a step back here. <laughs> you know, I wonder what all of this is doing to us. This, uh, sensory perception overload. Yeah. We're, we are, we're addicted to it. It's not well. Luckily, I mean, I'm, I'm, gu- I, I'm guilty of I, it too, though, Mark. I'm, I'm not on some moral cloud here. Well, I mean, everybody falls victim to it to a point, but I, I deliberately set out in the beginning because I, because I, when I was doing the the uh, support thing, when I was supporting these software companies, I was doing a lot of phone work, and so phone communication was important to me. Voice, you know, there's a lot of like what we're t- doing now. I mean, there's voice inflection, there's tone, there's pace. Things are complete, things like that are completely lost when it comes to text. And sure. so I decided of going, you know what? I, to this day, and I've, I'm not lying when it says I have never sent a text, not one. Mm. Uh, I've, I've received them, but I have never, we never sent back. one. Oh, I see. Never sent a text because I, in fact, I will pick up the phone. If somebody texts me something important, I will, I will pick up the phone and I will call them if I think it's important. I may email them if I know their email address, but I've told people I'll go and look. If you text me and you want me to respond, it's not going to happen. I don't care if you're on fire. <laughs> it w- will not happen. I go, you call me. You know, this is something, you know, we look, we've had phones for what? The better part of a hundred years. And then all of a sudden we just gave them up. That's it. You know, nobody, nobody talks on phones anymore. You're Feels right me. about that. Yes. More people are actually texting than they are calling each other up. Oh yeah. Data plans. I, I didn't even know. I mean, I grant I was late to the game when that was. I'm watching this and oh, there's your money maker. There, yes. Right, right there. You're I mean, starting to see the, the you're starting the to see the bondage they have over us. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. Yes. So, by the way, are are you still playing video games? Oh yeah, I'm I'm a lifer. You're still deep to into it. Um, not as deep. I mean, when I was doing the game stuff over uh, in Colorado, were you, I was were, playing at work and I was playing on the weekends. Were you playing on real tournament by any chance? No, 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 no. I was doing, again, I remember when I started, I, this was like the infancy. This was back before. Okay, you're way uh, back. You're deeper. I'm, I'm way back. I'm Doom 2. I'm Quake 1. Uh, this was, be, this is like before, for, for your kids out there, before World of Warcraft, there was Warcraft 3, Warcraft 2, and then the original Warcraft 1. I and, played those two, yes. Uh, um, I was, 
the games that I really got into back in the day were Diablo 2. Uh, I didn't even play Diablo 3 because they didn't have Paladins right away. Uh, one of my favorites is Fallout 3. But mm-hmm. I'm also one of those gamers that loves – everyone's got their guilty pleasures, kind of like movies that you don't want to admit that you watch with other people. Uh, I have games that I play that I generally don't admit, but I'll admit to you, which uh, the, my two big ones are Bejeweled, a notorious chick game or middle-aged housewife game, <laughs> and uh, Plants vs. Zombies, which – I, I thought both made by PopCap, a small publisher out of Seattle. And That's I just interesting yeah. that you would pick yeah. those games out yeah. of all the variations of video games we have today that you've yeah. gone back to sort of an old school round, but it's still yeah, uh, there, there's some I'm new, enough, well, there's some like new elements in, in those games that you're playing, however. But at the same time, I won't give up my my World of Warcraft account. I mean, I've, I've had it for, for well, since vanilla, so 13 years, 13 years. which again is amazing. I remember video game years are worse than like dog or cat years. Video, you know, six months and a game is forgotten forever. And World of Warcraft is still doing its thing 13 years later. That's, kind of, that's wild. Yes. And speaking of which, that reminds me of like you were talking earlier about the popularity of some YouTubers, some mm-hmm. content. Like, produ- yes. Like PewDiePie. Right. I was just thinking about how popular Twitch is and those video game channels are. It's, yeah. it's remarkable. Again, it's, it's, um, oh, there's a my lot. There. You want to see some scary stuff. And this, again, this goes back to my video game snobbery, which is when I was there when the Minecraft thing was just a blip, you know, just nothing. Minecraft was, uh, are you still there? Yeah, I'm still here. I'm just okay. completely surprised still. Uh, yeah, it's either Minecraft yeah. or. Um, well, the well, Mandela geez, effect now. Uh, Grand, Grand Theft Auto and all the versions of that. But you know why I won't play Grand Theft Auto, which is a beautiful game. It's gorgeous. Uh, because it's crime based. It's too violent for you. Well, it's not violent. It's illegal. <laughs> you're doing, you're playing criminals. It's morally that, wrong, you say? It's, it's more, yeah, it's a moral issue. And I that part, that part bugged me. And, and I had friends that kind of looked at me funny. I was going, come on. I mean, I stopped playing, uh, there was a, I'll, I'll give you a different version. It wasn't just a fluke. There was a game called Carmageddon back in the day. Ah, uh, yeah, I remember that. And one of the sequels, I think it was Carmageddon 3, you, one of the levels was you had to destroy the, uh, the police station, you know, the actual modernized academy, the police mm-hmm. academy. And it was gorgeous. The, the, the inside of the academy, I'm going, look, it's a wasteland out there. And you're killing cops because why? <laughs> I go, they're trying to keep order. And in fact, this is the only place it was a, it was a utopia compared to what was outside of it. And so I literally put down the controller. I said, yep, I'm not playing that game anymore. You were done it's, with it. Yeah, I was. I was done with Did it. Did you ever and hear the video game called Postal? I'd heard of it, but I never played it. It's even worse. Oh, Lord. I, I, yeah. <laughs> I mean, but, but Grand Theft Auto was, was kind of like in, in the same, same veins. You know, where you can get you get out of your car and beat up people on the street. Yeah, it's, oh. it's, it's pretty it's pretty brutal indeed. And that that makes me um, ask this question. Do you watch rated R movies for the for or do you not watch rated R movies for the same difference as you don't play? These no, kind of video no, no. Games? That's different because it's different? When it comes to. No, that's different because at least it's playing something and watching something is a little different. I can't endorse a game that actually encourages people that's that's the difference encourages people to commit crime whereas the um uh rated r movies and stuff that's more realistic there's one thing one of my pet peeves one of my biggest pet peeves is bad writing or sloppy writing or plot holes and the networks and i'll I'll give you an example here i stopped watching network television for that very reason because network television were handicapped that they there was only so much they could show, and when and what I meant was when Showtime and HBO and Stars and Cinemax started doing their own television series, you know, like Six Feet Under and yeah. um, Dexter mm-hmm. and uh, oh good Lord, Lord, there's so many out there that I could I could list off, uh, Game of Thrones for example, that that they, they didn't have to follow the rules. Of course, you're paying for it. It's like you're paying to see the story as gritty as as possible. So I, I, I enjoyed that aspect of it because it was realistic. It, it showed, it didn't hold back. There's something, you know, and I know there's some people say, well, you know, PG and G ratings and, and AOL and Christian values. Yeah, 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 that's, that's, that's fine and good. I'm not, 
I, and, and if the, it, but don't get me wrong, if the story endorsed a certain thing, I wouldn't necessarily promote it. Yeah. Uh, and you know, my, I, my biggest, my biggest pet peeve though for modern day films now is that they all use the same kind of formula, Mark. And, oh, well, you know, yeah, it kind of, I mean, I, I know the formula get, sells. I know all of that, but. No, no, you're absolutely right. Yeah, it's I just, did, you know, I, Mark, we have so many great minds. Now you kind of would expect some kind of original content to be produced by uh, 2017 now, but it yeah. seems like all we all we do now is go back in time to the old song and dance. That gets a little tiring, don't you think, Mark? You're You're absolutely right. In fact, I did a rant some time ago. Which was called, in fact, I did a, I did a Strange World episode on it called The Best Year in Movies, mm-hmm. which was 1999. And I put a challenge out to anybody that's out there. I go, look, there's a, there, you want to know why the world is, is grinding. You know, we're coming to some event, uh, inevitable conclusion. Part of it is because the novelty factor, and I'm going to quote Terrence McKenna here. I don't think, cause he said when he was, you know, Terrence McKenna, the, the guy that went out to the jungle yeah. that said that, oh yeah, he thought the world was going to end because he, he did a thing called the time wave zero. Yes. And he was saying the novelty factor just dropped into the floor at 2012. And he thought the world was going to end. I disagree. I don't think the world was going to end. I just thought it was literal, meaning novelty was basically going to run out. And you think I'm kidding. Look at the movies. Go ahead and look up, you know, films of 1999 and run through the list of how many amazing films were done in 1999. And then it slowly started to slip towards 2003. And by the time True. we got to 2012, we were out of, of original things. And <laughs> we and were done. You look yes. Up, you look up to movies oh of 2016. You look up the movies of 2017. They're all remakes. In fact, some of them are remakes of remakes or reboots of reboots to where this year, I mean, I can't find it. King Kong. Hey, great. We've seen that. Yeah, oh, Vin we're, Diesel's we're, in another movie. <laughs> Uh, I was John just about Wick's to say got, that. Yes, another see, another Fast the, and Furious film. Oh my God, the Fast and Furious! I mean, how many movie, how many of those can we make? I mean, uh, and, and don't get me wrong, I used to own a comic book shop back in the day. Superhero movies, I love them, but we're rebooting Spider Man now. It's played out. It's played it, out, Mark. I, I can't do it anymore. Yeah, and I know, superhero I know. movies, I, I always throw them under the bus here all the time. It's just the same goddamn thing. Oh. Excuse me there. No, no, it's it the is. same you're, you're damn right. thing all the time. We, I mean, there's some good special effects, but yeah, the formula, here's where, here's where we've run into a problem. I have basically stated that media has jumped the shark. If you guys don't know what jump the shark is, look it up. It's a Happy Days reference. That was when Happy Days was running out of ideas, like any show runs out of ideas. They basically had Fonzie. But the Fonz. For no, right. The Fonz. Henry Winkler. For no apparent reason, jump a shark tank outside of Al's diner. There was no. <laughs> I love that you mentioned that, by the way. And that now that has become a Hollywood term, which is when a show jumps right. the shark, when they when they're tapped out of ideas. And we've done that. We media has tapped out. We've run out of television shows. We've, we've drained. Run, yeah, we we drained it. The creative pool has been drained. And which is also part of the reason why I think the flatter thing is, is, um, is really taking off underneath the surface because no one's, it's, it's compared to everything else, you know, reality shows about beards or swamp chasers or crocodile people or what else it is. This is really novel compared to these things. And it, it combines a lot of stuff. It combines an original thought. Well, old but new yes and it's kind of secret and kind of conspiracy but it's way the hell out there yes and it's been amazing so yeah the mm-hmm. the, the, the formula the, the hollywood formula has been done we all know them i mean you mm-hmm. and i i don't know how old you are but you go you can walk into a movie now and if you've watched even a, a moderate amount of movie you can kind of figure out the plot you know pretty quickly because oh, they just I, telegraph yeah you know, yeah, like, oh, I, I know, buddy picture. I, I know within the first 15 to 20 minutes exactly how the film's going to play out. Yep. Yep. Which is why the, the shows nowadays just, just to keep it somewhat interesting will kill off characters. That's the, that's the thing that's been going on for the last four or five years. Yep. That's that the new just thing. To find a major character. You, uh, you're, you're invested in that person for three years. Too bad. <laughs> They're dying off right with now. His, yep. Off with his head. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, Game of Thrones has become a oh, model. Of that. My goodness, you know, I kind of had a drop out from Game of Thrones after I don't know. I think what was it the fourth or fifth season? I just kind of lost interest. Well, they're out. They're almost done now. Again, Game of Thrones is running to the end. They eventually they have to get to their final war, 
And I haven't read any of the books or anything, so I don't how, know. How deep are they now? I, I don't even know what season seven. they're Seven. Is it seven? Is it seven? I'd have to, I have to look at it. It's either seven or eight. But they have to end with – I mean, the, that's it. I mean, the, yeah, the, Don't get the me wrong. Run, yeah, don't get me wrong. It's a, it's a good series. It's just it, – it's already met its time. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's amazing when I was going through – if you want to have some fun, I was going through – because you can look this all – everything's, of course, coded on the on the internet – you can type in, uh, like stars television series or HBO television series. And I'm going through them. I'm just going, holy smokes. That seems like ages ago. And I've watched pretty much most of them. And so, and now I'm, I've been you know, looking for new series. I mean, luckily, you know, I've, the, the flyer thing has taken up most of my time, but in, you know, when I have downtime, you know, I, I'm scrambling to find anything that's new-ish, that feels new, that's not a sequel. I mean, yeah, people want I, original content. That's true. Yeah, I mean, for good for goodness sake, we're we actually made three more Star Wars movies. You know, we're the third one's gonna come out here. What the uh, next the, the end of this year? Where? Oh what, yes. Wait, why? Why would you? Because there was money involved, and because why not? You I know, have just you know? I have no interest in it in, in that series anymore. Yeah. Well, they Sadly. lost me after the whole yeah. walkie thingy. Right. So, Mark, let, let's go back into what you were mentioning earlier about Antarctica. It seems like there's been lots of activity out there, and you did mention Admiral Byrd earlier, who was actually one of the first people I've ever heard talk about the hollow earth theory and how there's, yep. I, I believe he had said something about a specific race of ETs perhaps living down deep into the core there in, in his private yeah. journal, I believe it was. He, the secret journal, and, and again, I don't know if I can vet it or not, but that's how a lot of people, everyone knows if you're into conspiracies that Admiral Byrd is tied to the hollow earth theory. Mm-hmm. We all know it. We all know this. But when I started looking at the flat earth theory, that's where the real story is. And that is he goes to the North Pole in 1926, supposedly, you know, a journey to the center of the earth type thing. And then he turns around and he, for whatever reason, again, I knew, you know, they send him down to the Antarctic Circle for, from 1928 up until the 1950s. And that's, he was like the lead guy and he flew his own planes and he was, took him 30 years before he finally found it to the point where, and again, part of the reason, well, one of the big turning points for me was seeing the Admiral Byrd footage on the CBS affiliate for the television show Long Jeans Chronoscope, which is spelled L-O-N-G-I-N-E-S. It's a watch company. I think it's French. And where he goes on national television, it's a great copy, too. I mean, it's black and white, but it's excellent resolution. Where he goes on and and says that – this is 1954. Right. Mm -hmm. That the Antarctic is just ripe for investment, resource investment. It's made out of money. And, and all these countries are down there. New Zealand and Argentina and Great Britain and Soviet Union. And, uh, everyone is down there. It's like eight or nine countries at the time. And they were all going to make money. And what I think happened was, again, this is Murphy's Law. Right. Is that he was looking for 30 years and even the Illuminati or the powers to be or whoever you want to call, whatever you want to call. The Germans were out there too, by the way. Well, that was, that was an also an interesting wrinkle. So much to talk about here. Yes. Yeah. The Germans were down there and they were the, so everyone was exploring Antarctica until World War II broke out. And then only one country was down in Antarctica during World War II, and that was Germany, because the the, the whole um, Indiana Jones uh, and the Raiders of the Lost Ark story, you know, where the Germans were looking for mystical objects to, to win the war, that yeah. was absolutely true. They, they, they were under the belief, and why wouldn't you? You know, if you're, well, if you're you want to win, take a, yeah, if you want to win, you, you want to do everything in your power yeah, to. And, if you're trying to take mm-hmm. over the world, which is what they were doing, this wasn't a regional skirmish. This was Nazi Germany saying, you know what, we're going for the whole ball of wax. And they figured, okay, anything that sounds magical, any rumors of any magical things or weird things or technology things, we're going to go for it. All and in, so yeah. They were down there in Antarctica. And we know this because then when the world, when the war was over, for whatever reason, even though they don't talk about it in the papers, there was, they do mention there was a giant expedition, not scientific, a full blown carrier group with support ships and thousands of men. Right. Who, but ad, led by Admiral Byrd in 1946, after the, the, the Japanese had surrendered in 1945, called, uh, Operation High Jump. Interesting name. 
And they go down there, and once they got down there, it was pretty much a media blackout. There is just nothing but rumor after they got down there. Now, some people say they met the Nazi, the Nazis and finished them off. Some people say the Nazis ran deeper into the snow. Some people said they got asylum from, you know, the tech, you know, from a higher, you know, higher technology race. And I, I tend to go with the latter because that kind of sounds like a high school, junior high dance thing. It's like, because <laughs> if, yeah. if you ask for asylum, it's like, okay, you can come with us, but you're never coming back in here. Right. You know, that's, that's it. Once you're out, you're out. And, and I, and I, the reason why I believe that is because only eight years later, when Admiral Byrd was on television, all these countries were doing work down there and he didn't seem to have a care in the world. And he's a military commander. He didn't, he couldn't care less about anything. It's like a mountain range man of coal and uranium and oil and, oh, people are going to, he's saying this on television. We're going to be down there for the next hundred years. You know, just carving that place up. And in fact, he was worried that there would be disputes over resources. He's saying this. And then, of course, Murphy's Law kicks in. Which is the the powers of be thought that whatever was that they the, that the maps were wrong. It's like yeah, well you know what, S- screwed it up. Yeah, let's just make money. And then of course Admiral Byrd has to report back and say you know there's something really weird down there. And then everything changed. The uh, the Antarctic Treaty was then uh, immediately started working on it. And in fact, it was, uh, uh, it wasn't even completed until Admiral Byrd died, you know, mysteriously in 1957. Right. Heart attack in his own home. Sounds pretty pedestrian. It sounds kind of unusual. Uh, yeah, it does. As, because, as but, you know now, Mark, I'm, I'm quite aware you probably are. And you're, you're very in, informed in what's going on in the world today. I'm, I know that for a fact. Yeah. You, you've seen these mysterious deaths now. Oh yeah. So yeah, you, you can just, you can yeah. kill people just about any way you want. It makes you really think back in time, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. You can uh, all the stuff that used to happen that we that we attributed to just oh this happens and mm-hmm. that happens. No assassinations. We we've, we've come a long way. It's not a conspiracy after all, is it? No, I don't know. It's not a conspiracy. That's I don't know. I, it's a, if you may be paranoid, but that doesn't mean there's not someone after you. Exactly. You you just never know. No, you never do. So the the Antarctic Treaty w- was put in place in 1959. And what it says, again, for those people out there, it's like, no, I can book a trip to Antarctica right now. It's like, oh, yeah, you can. So, you know, if you're in the United States, about 10000 12000 bucks, you can go to the Antarctic Peninsula, have your picture taken with some penguins, riding around in a raft, and wear a super thick orange suit, survival suit, because it's horrible down there. And you can do that. But... That's about it. That's about all you can do. Corporations. This is where it gets weird. It gets Even really after, weird, yeah. After Admiral Byrd said that the place, you know, he was worried the corporations are going to be fighting over this for the next hundred years. All the corporations in the world unilaterally agreed to voluntarily, well, the governments voluntarily signed a piece of paper saying that no corporation will ever be down there ever, ever. And this is the only treaty that no treaty has lasted as long. No treaty has been ever as ironclad. And here's where I, it bugged me. Here's where it got strange is that it wasn't just that the corporations weren't allowed to go down there. Corporations weren't even allowed to talk about going down. There. And you said, oh, I, what does that mean? Well, let's say you're the head of Exxon, mm-hmm. you know, oil, right? I've got unlimited funds. I can do anything I want. I can start fracking in your backyard tomorrow. You try to stop me. Uh, that sort of power. These guys are getting into national parks. You know, that's how much power these guys have. And yet my company, isn't even allowed to debate going down to Antarctica. I mean, why don't I just call my buddy at the New York Times and run a full-page ad every month saying how great it would be for Mark's company to do oil research right. down and how great for America for Mark's company to do oil research down in Antarctica. I'm not even allowed to do that. And not only am I not allowed to do it, no other country is allowed to do it. Why isn't China fighting us for the oil rights in Antarctica? Why isn't the Soviet Union or Great Britain or Australia? Anybody, nobody talks about it. It's one of those things that is one of those super, super, super high-level secrets so that if an oil exec even thinks about doing it, well, you know, his phone lines and emails are probably tapped, and somebody right. then gives him a call and says, you know what, or whatever language you're talking in, and says, it's national security, you're not allowed to go down there, never talk about it again. And then that buys you time until the next CEO comes along, and then maybe they pass on the information, maybe they don't. But it goes against the reason why that really raised some flags for me was like with a lot of people it goes against everything that we are for good or bad about our civilization look our civilization is based on on greed and power and money 
That's all the movies. You know, what was that line from Vanilla Sky? Nine out of every ten problems in the world are about money. Money, yeah. And this is bigger than that. This is this is the only one of only two things that I know of that's bigger than money. One would be, of course, like you know what what happens after you die, which is covered in the movie uh, The Discovery recently with Robert sure. Redford. But what that that what they basically were saying was we can't take the chance of an oil company going down there and a helicopter going off course or a plane going off course or somebody getting lost and looking at something they shouldn't be because once that happens then we're gonna have to clean it up and take you know what that means is like, well you're gonna take care of whoever it is that person disappears you can't let that happen it's like the money basically what they said was the money isn't worth it the revenue isn't worth it let's just seal the sucker off forever. It's not even it's not even up for debate. It's the treaty isn't even up for review until 2041. That's strange. That's how. In, in that's your how, opinion, what exactly is out there, Mark, and why were uh, politicians and the world leaders out there for? Oh, you mean just recently? Yeah, just recently. Well, it's it's for me. There's I think there's several things. One, I think it's some sort of gateway to the outside world. Meaning, I think we're living in a giant snow globe, basically. Uh, a Truman Show, a giant Hollywood soundstage, a terrarium, a planetarium, whatever you want to name it, whatever it is. And the outer edge, the, like the edge of the Truman Show, is out there somewhere. And what that's what they initially found. And for some reason, it's become much, much more significant because, again, this is the weirdest things have been happening just in the last 12 months. It started off, and I made a video about it. And again, I, this sounds like a joke when I when I say this, because it sounds like a bar joke, you know, like to you know Catholic <laughs> priests and a, I understand. And, a, and a rabbi walk into a bar. Yeah, Leonardo DiCaprio goes to the Pope, <laughs> seriously, <laughs> and he says, "Oh yeah, by the way, um, I used to have this painting hang above my crib. It's by Hieronymus Bosch, and it's when we all thought the Earth was flat." Yes. And uh, to me, it represents the promise of future and, oh boy, uh, harmony or something like that. Something very positive. It's like, look, Leonardo only had 15 minutes with the Pope to talk about climate change. And that's what he talked about. He said, well, why is he talking? And he gave them a, a, a book with this painting in it. Then that Pope, you know, the Pope, he travels to Cuba for the first time to meet with a Russian Orthodox Pope. Ish guy, I don't know much about the Catholic Church hierarchy. For the first time, these popes have met in a thousand years. Could not make that up, and we don't know what they talked about. But then that that Orthodox Russian guy, he goes down to uh, um, Antarctica and takes pictures on the beach publicly with penguins. Why is he down there? Well, we don't know because whatever happened during his private time, we don't know. Um, John Kerry, Secretary of State at the time for Obama, right. He, he's down there. He's down there on election night when Hillary and and uh, Trump are going head to head. You know, he, he's Hillary's guy, right? He what? Why is he down in Antarctica? Yeah, he's out there. Uh, I can't remember. I think it was was it Buzz Aldrin? Buzz yeah, Aldrin, it was Buzz yeah, Aldrin. He was there. Buzz Aldrin's down there for uh, one of the Apollo astronauts. One of the only seven remaining Apollo astronauts. He's down there. Something happens to him health wise. At his happens. age, what on earth was he doing out there? Yeah, no play on words. Yeah, wow. absolutely. He was, it, we have no idea what, what was happening down there. It just got, it was, you know, there was rumors of a Russian naval fleet that was transporting some artifact down to Antarctica. You know, it was very tight security. Um, all these things happened in 2016. Just, uh, it, we're, we're staring at this going, holy smokes. Meanwhile, Meanwhile, back at home, uh, th back in the United States, you got a celebrity, you know, the, the, one of the world's best athletes, Kyrie Irving for the world champion Cavaliers, who's also in the finals again this year, just happening now. They just finished game one last night. He, he comes out during a podcast just before the all-star game and says, Oh yeah, by the way, the earth's flat. It's totally flat. I mean, you can tell. And that made sense to me because basketball players and baseball players have a lot more road games than football players. So they're watching a lot of YouTube and he they was totally be. into it. He was quoting some of my stuff. Absolutely. And he, but he wasn't using my name. It's like one of these days, yeah. somebody's going to bring my name up. Someone's going to drop it. Yeah. Somebody's going to drop it. Then I'm going to be in trouble. Hopefully it's not Trump. <laughs> oh my. I know. Cause well, you never know. I mean, I'm telling but, you, these people, they had to have seen your videos again, like Neil deGrasse oh, yeah. Tyson and, and Joe Rogan and, and Bill it's, Nye, it, it almost seems like they 
are directing the, their messages directly to you, Mark? Well, there nobody's calling me out, which is interesting. I can see again, it. I'm I, I can hear you. my quotes. Uh, I can hear the info, and I can hear how things are laid out. And I'm going, okay, so you watched it. I get it. But they're not calling me. You know, I'm not on the cover. They're of not. They're not bringing attention to you. That's what they're doing. No, they're being no, smart no, about they, it. They don't want to mention your name. Maybe, maybe they don't want. Again, one of my, one of my fear. Well, it's not even a fear. It's kind of a weird, infamous thing where it's like, will I be on the cover of Time? It's like the most dangerous man. You know, will I be the villain if, uh, if this thing gets <laughs> any bigger? It's, it's very possible. It's like in a bad picture of me you're grimacing. You know, mother's going, oh God, he looks so evil. Maybe he's tied to ISIS. We don't know. Oh no. No, no. I mean, but that's just it. We haven't been, you know, you could, you could turn flat earth and very easily. You could have blown up something and, you, and, yes. and, and yeah. tied it to us, but they haven't. We, this thing is running without resistance in so many different ways. And it's fascinating to watch. Like, for example, if you type in, um, uh, other conspiracies into, to YouTube recommended for you on the side, there will be eventually flat earth videos. I've seen people make videos. Asking the YouTube community how they stop flat earth videos from being recommended. I've had tons of people that have told me they were watching something on, I don't know, JFK and then the autoplay feature, you know, that YouTube autoplay yes. rolls to the next video. All of a sudden they go, they're vacuuming or doing dishes. It's like all of a sudden I start hearing flat earth stuff <laughs> in the background. It's like, what? And you're going, what? How is this even happening? Um, if you wanted to shut that down, I mean, that's some simple coding. You just say, you know, if you see any videos with the titles of Flat Earth and all other variations, you don't ever recommend them. True. Uh, you don't – you go into any search engine. I don't care what it is, Firefox or Chrome or Google or what, what – I don't care what it is. You type in the Earth is, see what shows up at the top of the list. It's flat. Um, or is the. I mean, those are two very small words, right? And And it'll show up, is the Earth flat? And it's because that's just a side effect of the community because the community is so uh, enthusiastic about finding the latest news. They're constantly typing into the search engines, flat earth, flat earth, flat earth, refresh, refresh, refresh. And, and I mean, you know, there's corporations out there that would love to see their stuff at the top of any search recommendation. Oh, of course. You know, like the best soda is fill in the, your name yeah, here. They want to, they want to throw in those ads. Exactly. They pay big money to Google AdWords and big money to Internet marketing firms. We did that without anything. That's just a side effect. I know that's that's the wild part. And that's the astonishing part I'm talking about. If it yeah. um, like like I was mentioning earlier, if it isn't the Mandela effect, it's it's Minecraft and the flat earth theory. Uh, Minecraft. This is a bane of sorry. It's the bane of my <laughs> video existence. I appreciate Minecraft, people are yeah. using it to create brand new worlds, but it is like. For me, you know, growing up in a gaming world, it's like going in a time travel machine. That's it's what like, I say. Look, yeah. It's, it's, I go, look, you're building this. It's like, in fact, I'm really amazed that Lego didn't sue them because it's like you're building a world out of Legos, but you're looking really close up at them. I mean, it's, it's the, it's an eight bit Lego graphic editor. That's all it is. And kids think it's the greatest thing since bubblegum. Mark, I, I, I have to ask you, has anyone made a, a flat earth rendition on Minecraft yet? No, they didn't have to. You know why? Because, and I can say this from an absolute authority uh, standpoint, all 99% of video games that are out there are flat, perfectly flat. That's true. You're right, and actually. The, re the, the reason is, is because I'm not picking on software developers and I'm not picking on God because, hey, well, you're calling God lazy. I'm going, mm -hmm. no, I'm not. I'm saying that God is very, very efficient. You don't build a curved earth into video games because it's a lot harder and nobody's going to notice anyway. If you even if you build a curve, it's like, if, what are you getting out of it? You're just making the physics engine way more right. difficult. You're making the graphics engine way more difficult. And it, in all of it, I mean, it's what's amazed me. In fact, I, I'll, I'll share a story I haven't shared with anybody else. Nice. War, in Warcraft, the latest version, I actually went into a room where they had a spinning globe, an actual Warcraft map globe. And it was spinning, and I'm looking at this, I'm going, okay, first off, I've seen the Warcraft map for over a decade, and I know full well it's absolutely perfectly flat. But since they put it on a globe, people now think, you know, the the, the there's kids, I guarantee you, they're looking at, oh, yeah, the Warcraft world is, is curved. It's like, no, no, just because the globe is curved doesn't mean it's curved. 
It just means that they're showing you that's the projection they're showing you. It's absolutely perfectly flat. I mean, you can you can test this at any altitude, any anywhere go out there. It's it's pixel perfect flat. Yes, and I've okay. seen I've seen plenty of your videos, Mark, mm-hmm. showing the horizon being flat. Oh yeah, yeah. The horizon is, and Neil deGrasse Tyson tried to address this, and and but it's interesting because again, it's your programming. I have had people say they can see flatness from planes, which is fine. I, I, you you want to say that, that's fine, but I'll address that in a second. I've seen people say they can see it from mountains and, or the curvature, and they can see the curvature from the water, from the beach. People swear to me they can see the, the, the curvature from all three of these things, and I'm fine. Take a picture of it, put it on your laptop, hold a straight edge to it. I don't care if it's a piece of paper or a book, or whatever, use a straight edge. If you still see the curvature, you email it to me, I will quit Flat Earth now. I'll quit it. Just I'll close up shop. Just, yep, sick. And it's been uh 18 months uh, since I put out that challenge. And no, in fact, I haven't even got, I got one email from a pilot and that wasn't even directly to me. It was through secondhand through his friend and the clouds were curved. But once you turned up the contrast, you saw the the real horizon and it was perfectly flat. But the, but the thing is, here's the difference. Pilots, sometimes pilots, pilot, but mostly people on the ground and, and everybody else, you want to see the curve. That's the difference. It's not that you see the curve. And that's very um, uh, George Orwell. I want to see the curve, too. You know, you think you see five, four lights or five lights or whatever it is, but you only see, you know, it's you you want to see the curve. Yeah. I mean, I grew up the globe. I used to collect. So I, you're, you're talking about somebody that did not come to this easy. I collected antique globes as a hobby back in the early 2000s. I, I That was one of my I mean, everything from little bookends to old school globes. I loved them. I thought they were fantastic. I thought they were great icons. For me to give that up was a major paradigm shift. And yet here I am in 2017, uh, and we are going to, you know, we're, I've done socials. I put out 600 videos. I did a book. I did apps. And I'm going to do a conference. In fact, it, look, it might be multiple conferences before it's over. So it's amazing. It, it really is amazing. And tell us about these conferences quickly here. The the big one that's coming up, and it's sold out right now, I do not know if they're going to release new tickets. You can always be put on the waiting list, and I know those tickets are transferable. So you can uh, – it's the 2017 Flat Earth International Conference in Raleigh, North Carolina. You can go to the website, which is fe2017.com. I am not the one that's, that put it on. It's done by uh, separate YouTube channels. And it's going to be November 9th and 10th of this year in Raleigh, North Carolina. It's going to be, and it should be great. I mean, again, it's sold out, uh, the, at least the first wave of it sold out. And it, you know, there's going to be a lot of speakers there. You can check out the, the promos are all over YouTube. Uh, just about most of the major YouTube channels, well, at least their the major channels in 2016 are going to be there. And some of the ones that are up and comers in 2017 are going to be there. And uh, I'm doing a keynote speech after lunch on the first day and then i'm doing the flat earth video awards show with patricia steer uh the last event on the second day and it should be a lot of fun i i can't wait i mean you don't know until you get into a room full of people like-minded shared beliefs after they've been persecuted you know by oh, yes. by, fr- by friends and family members the energy is amazing and i've been in just small groups of as little as to, you know, you know 20, that, that 20, re- I'm sorry to cut cut you off there, Mark. Oh, no, but, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, now I'm curious. Um, what what do your parents or yeah, your family members and your your peers? What do they have to say about your belief in the flat Earth theory? Well, I'm lucky in some regards because I never got married and never had kids, so I didn't have to deal with the grief that quite a few spouses sure. are having out there. Sure. Uh, because because I've I've heard a lot of lot of people that have said, oh, yeah, my wife doesn't believe or my husband doesn't believe, and I get emails well, you know, like that all the time. Well, sometimes those opinions, depending on who your wife may be, it's probably better left than said. Yeah. In some cases. Yeah, but, but the thing is the enthusiasm level. Once you – here's the one of the big drawbacks of Flat Earth, and I'm not talking about the theory. I'm just talking about what it does to you psychologically, is you get so excited when it finally hits you, when you get that – aha moment that you need to vent it somewhere you don't know what to do with it and so people will go out and you know they'll bring it up at a, I, mean, I don't know how many people told me sorry i went to thanksgiving or a family dinner or a family reunion or whatever it is and they just let it fly Ooh, someone and dropped they, the flat earth they, yeah they forget <laughs> nice. how long it took them 
to get there. I'm going, dude, I go, and I try to explain. I go, how long did it take you to turn the flat earth? They go, four days. And I go, how long did you have these people? They go, 90 minutes. <laughs> I go, do you really think you were going to convince anybody in 90 minutes? I go, all you can do is put the idea out there. You've got to let them. And people get frustrated. You've got to plant like, the couldn't... seed, right? Yeah. Why can't you? Why can't I convince them in, in 60 minutes? <laughs> Are you kidding? That's not going to work. I, you, you can't do it. So anyway, so when it comes to my family, uh, my mom's on board, but you know, mothers generally support their sons. Sure. I mean, I could be a serial killer, she'd probably support. She'd probably still love you. Yeah, exactly. It's yeah. like, are you eating people again? Don't stay <laughs> up too late. The um, uh, you, my sister doesn't believe. Uh, my father, I didn't really talk to them. Uh, my brother-in-law, he thinks I'm insane, but he's like a, he's like a, a plaid man's man type of guy. My cousins, some of my cousins believe, some of my cousins don't believe. So it's pretty split, which is what I, I more or less expect. I understand, yes. But it's been, it's not bad because I was kind of lucky because I grew up kind of eccentric. So I, people, when, when I went, went down this road, I mean, yeah, it's a, it's even for your, most eccentric people. This is way out there, but I uh, people weren't completely shocked. It's like they said, "Mark, oh yeah, not a total surprise." <laughs> okay. You know, right. my opinion, Mark, on on the flat Earth theory. I'll be honest with you. I'm not a hundred percent sold. But then again, Mark, I'm not a hundred percent sold on anything. <laughs> I don't like to be married to any one concept. However, you don't you don't, you don't have to be sold. Yes, on. and but there there's there's some things there. That I could see some interesting aspects of, about it, this, and I, I I just think it's good to keep an open mind. What it does do, let, let me throw this in. Because what of NASA, do, by the way, Mark, I have to I have to give you my biasness. It, it's what? because of NASA. I I just feel like they have lied about certain things in the past. Yeah, but at the same time, you know, NASA is the, they might as well be the, the poster boy for science. I mean, they wear right. white uniforms. Sure. They smile for the camera. They don't carry guns. And that whenever they do a technology section, there's at least one NASA story in every technology section of every web thing that's out there. That, and I'm, what we, what we try to do is I try to treat the flat earth like a court case, which is it's not that we can prove flat earth in court right off the bat. But what we can do is create massive uh, reasonable doubt in the globe to the point where you're quite, and once that happens, then you're way more pliable to, to the idea. Now you may say, look, I, I, cause I've heard this from people. I was saying, I don't know if it's flat, but I really know it's not a globe and, and which is fine on our side. We've got a number of different uh, ceremonial flags Metaphorical flags, metaphorical flags for the flat earth. And that is there's, you know, some people believe in a dome. Some people don't believe in a dome. Some believe, people believe in other continents, other dimensions and all sorts of other stuff. But what everybody agrees on is on the other side of that battlefield is only one flag. And that flag is the globe. And that thing is just turned, been turned into Swiss cheese. And so, you know, that's what we put out there. But, but what I try to, how much, oh, how much time do we have left? We, we, we could still keep going here. Okay. Well, what I try to tell people is, uh, let, let me do this one early then, and then we can trail off into other things. Which is, look, no matter what I, whatever, what I'm telling you right now, don't believe what I'm saying. Don't take my word for it. I mean, what do I know? I'm, a, I'm an ex video game junkie that, uh, you know, ended up being a flat earther. But at the same time, do your own research and ask questions. Always ask questions. What the, what is really coming out of this is that people are, I really, there was a YouTube channel. I'm not going to quote him right now or his name, but he had an interesting quote, and that is what's happening is people are abandoning blind faith, which is don't just believe something because you somebody told it to you. You know, it, well, you read it in a science book and, and say, well, no, you got to believe some stuff. And well, okay, fine, I'll give you an easy one. And that is the core of the earth, which is you open up any science book at age 9 to 90, and you'll see that wonderful cross-section of the earth. We've all seen it where you get that red band and the orange band and the yellow band and the white band, perfect 1,000-mile thick layers all the way to the center. If you believe mainstream science, you dig a hole. It doesn't go to China, but it takes about 4,000 miles to get to the center of the earth. And I go, okay, well, what's, what's the deepest hole ever drilled? There's 1,000, 100 miles? I mean, you remember, 1%. Down would be 40 miles. So how deep is the deepest hole ever drilled? It's eight miles. 
Yeah, eight that's, miles, that's, right? That's a, that's a fraction of 1%. So if you've only dug down eight miles, what the heck are these diagrams showing all these different bands going down to the center of the earth? How do you know what's down there? They don't. But they're not going to put the disclaimer. That's one of my, my beefs with science, which is you don't put the disclaimer on the artist's drawing. And you say, oh, I shouldn't have to put the disclaimer. Well, you do, because if a nine-year-old sees that drawing, and then he sees it again when he's 11 and when he's 15, by the time he gets out of high school, that drawing's absolute fact, absolute bona fide fact, and he's willing to fight you to, to, to defend it. Imagine, you know, that, and that goes for the world as well. There's no difference between that argument about the core of the Earth and the actual Earth, which is they tell you that it's a globe. But remember, it's they're defending their own interests. Science, I'm not saying that science is bad. Look, science uh, has created some wonderful things over the years. Light bulbs, fantastic. Air conditioning, even better. Uh, microwave ovens, more or less, you know, they're convenient. Sure. Even though all three of these things, the average person on the street couldn't tell you how any of them worked to it, in any detail. I mean, we've had microwave ovens now for 40 years. Most people don't even know how they work. But when it comes to other things, do not think for a second that science is incorruptible. Do not think for a second they cannot be bribed. They're men like anybody else. They think I'm kidding. Is it, how many examples do I have to give you? They're all out there. I'll rapid fire them for you. How many times have scientists and labs pushed products? I'm not talking about the military stuff where they're told to make horrible, horrible things like nerve gas and uh, atomic weapons and napalm. Not that stuff. I'm talking about products that you use. These things are rushed to market for stocks and quarterly reports and investors and scientists are asked to bend and sometimes break the rules in those cases just little things like i don't know lead paint uh ddt look up that how many homes they spray with ddt and that was just because they wanted to kill mosquitoes they almost right. killed our national bird with ddt that's true uh, at asbestos great product unless you work in the factory that makes it then you're dead uh, oh, and then, of course, you know, the famous one, which is uh, all the scientists that came out that took all the money and said that cigarettes don't do anything bad. To there you that. go. Yeah. So don't think that science is absolutely incorruptible. Don't think. Now, does that, does that mean that all scientists are bad? No, of course not. Just don't. Remember who you're dealing with. Things like Enron happened. Right. There's big things. The, the, do you think the the AIG thing was just a fluke? No, the people knew what was going on. Uh, it's just. Yeah, and let, let me um let me direct you a different route quickly here. Sure, sure. It sure. seems like Mr. Robert Bigelow, as as you understand quite well, who he is, right, Mark? Robert Robert Bigelow. Yes. Uh, does he go by a different name? No, I I believe he's been coming out on TV. He's been talking a lot about extraterrestrial life. Oh, uh, okay, okay. I was just going to ask you, what's your opinion on extraterrestrial life? I believe that it's this flat earth doesn't change that many things, but it does change what we think as whatever's flying around the sky. Now, I will tell you right now, and I've said this many, many times, you want to buy, want to see what's going on in the sky. And I took this for a tip from a, a London guy, uh, some interview where he goes, get a pair of night vision binoculars, start looking up. And it's amazing what you will see when you take night vision, vision binoculars and get right. your eyes right and, and stare up in the sky. But what I think they are, uh, are they up there? Yes, they are. Do I think they're from other planets like Mars and Neptune and, and um, Pluto and stuff like that? Oh, except Pluto's not a planet anymore. Mm, yes. Uh, no, no, I don't. I think they are older versions of us. I and and that segues into a different thing, which is I don't think that we're the first civilization by a long shot on this planet. And, and despite what science will tell you, it's like look, our our history only goes back unbroken five thousand years. And we have a lot of stuff out there that's way, way older. Go to the pyramids. 5,000 years? I don't think so. Uh, sunken cities off Japan. Sunken cities off of India. Uh, the Bosnian pyramids. Uh, this, the Bimini Road. What what the hell is left of Atlantis or the continent of Mu? Yeah. What I'm saying is that every one of these civilizations, I think, left remnants. They were Some of them survived. Maybe some of them Some didn't, of them didn't. destroyed, perhaps. Yeah, some of them destroyed. But there's remnants flying around up there, and they still have to follow rules, and they're hanging around here. You know, they don't get to land in Main Street anywhere and, and take pictures and shake hands and do all that stuff. But they do get to you know show up every one and pick off a few people in a rowboat or in the woods or something like that. But they're, they're there. They're and there. You're all they, in then. 
Yeah. Oh, absolutely all in. Are we version? The only question is what version are we? You know, True. Are we ver- are we version seven? Who was version five? Who was around when Pangaea, the supercontinent, was formed? And then, of course, the big question, you know, who was version one? And then, we are the extraterrestrial. Yeah. Well, and yeah, and we – look, when the next civilization – I'm not being doom and gloom here. Look, somebody had to move for us to get in here. Correct. We're going to have to move for someone else to get in here. I, and, that, and that brings me to my next point about Elon Musk, who wants to go to the – he wants to go to Mars. He's not going where. I was just going to ask. Mars, you, I was just going to ask you this. Do you Mars think, mission. Do you Elon think we're going to go? SpaceX. Do you think we're going to go? Mark? No, 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 no. They're kick, they're going to kick that can down the road, just like they kicked um, hydrogen fuel cell cars. If people, they want to remember those things, uh, they were, we were supposed to have hydrogen fuel cell cars ten years ago, and they, what that happened was, and the really reason there was there was going to be hydrogen fuel cell instead of something else, was because that was the only commodity that the oil companies could could produce that could be used as fuel other than gas. They could actually the oil companies actually own the monopoly on hydrogen gas. But hydrogen gas has a weakness. The biggest one is it doesn't work in a combustion engine in cold weather. Well, well how many cars are you going to sell in Minnesota or True. Wisconsin, Canada? You can sell cars in, in only warm weather environments and never gonna never ever ever gonna happen. So they just stop talking about it. Nobody they pulled the stations, every all the ads are gone, all the car designs are gone, all the app Nobody even talks about hydrogen fuel cell cars. Elon Musk talking about, and we got to remember, SpaceX isn't a public company, thank God. And that is, right. they they are breaking so many rules by saying, because they're saying they're going to go to to the moon next year. Yeah, that's what they were saying. They're going to slingshot two tourists around the ne- the moon next year. I mean, literally this time next year. We even though they don't have a tested booster rocket, the the Falcon Heavy never been tested. A capsule we've never seen. We don't know who the pilots are. We don't know who the passengers are. How in the world are you going to fake this? And I have said this forever, which is the detection ability of the Internet hive minds. And that means the people listening now right. is too good. We've got 4K monitors. We've got super high fast Internet and we've got um, social media so we can transfer stuff around like that in, in many different forms. If it goes out there once, it sticks forever. You're not going to be able to scrub it. So you can't fake something like that. You won't, you don't even want to try. I, I joked, but I'm not joking. If the government came to me, this is like Joe Rogan taking the bait. If the government <laughs> came to me and offered me a dump truck full of money and said, we want you, not, forget about the Mars mission, to fake the moon mission, I'd say, and you have unlimited access to Hollywood talent, special effects guys. I'd say, no, 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 I can't do it. I can't do it because somebody, it's you're you're leaving it up to the weakest link. Some editor screws something up. Some intern screws something up. All you need is one screw up, and then you get a guy in his underwear in Kansas at three o'clock in the morning who finds it and then tweets it to ten thousand of his friends, and that's it. You're blown. You're you're grim. That's all over. And then it's then it's worse than Apollo. We can't. I mean, the ISS footage. The problem is the problem isn't post production. You want to make a movie as beautiful as Gravity. We can do that, but if you try to do anything live or near real time, you're you're running into the limits mm. of the technology, and you're running into the limits of people. I see. And people make mistakes. Look, the first version of Lord of the Rings had a car driving on a highway in the in the distance. Yeah, that's true. The, you know, I remember that seeing that online. Yeah. MovieMistakes.com, <laughs> MovieBloopers.com. I'm glad you, you mentioned make, that. They, yes. But you can't do it. So no, they're you, not going to Mars. They're not going. You know, Mark, we, we were talking about. Uh, Mass manipulation and brainwashing and all these lovable topics. That reminds me, Elon Musk is another gentleman who believes in mind control. He also, well, let me just propose this question. What, what else is another great way to keep you brainwashed? Did, regarding what? Like uh, the globe brainwashing? To keeping your, just keeping you completely brainwashed. What, what's a, Perfect way of doing that um, without without social media. I give up. What do you got? Well, Elon Musk wants to install a computer in your brain. Oh, right. So, right, right, what right. is that? What the, well, does that tell you? Unfo- unfortunately, that that's not going to do. It's never going it, to. That's also never going to happen. Here's why. That's how it all begins, though, Mark. Well, it is. But ideas like this. It's it's not a bad idea. I mean, you know, entertainment companies would, would latch on to they it. They would love it. But, yeah, I could see some good, but I could also see some bad. 
Well, yeah, the, there's there's certain things that the general public would be really uneasy about, and here's why. Because something like that, it's not just a one-way system. It's two ways. Eventually, if you can plug, if you can pump information in, you can extract information. It all comes down to the translation software. Right. So, and we've been talking about this, oh, good Lord, since uh, Brainstorm, the movie in um, with Christopher Walken and Natalie Wood back in the early 80s. That, that, was, that was the entire premise of that movie, which was if you could record human memory, then you could also play it back into it. You know, not only could you download human memory, but you could also upload human Correct. memory. Correct. Once memory is becomes uploaded, then you're talking about a dark city scenario, and then you're then it gets spooky because then you then you're talking neo matrixy type stuff, and then you're talking about people that that thinks they have a full memory. It's kind of like the um I, I hate to use too many movie references here, the Blade Runner, the first Blade Runner sure. thing. Where the replicants had full memories. Sean Young's character had full memories, even though she was just built last year. Because I'm well, telling you, Mark, know? this is how it all begins. Well, again, it's dangerous. They the, already the have. Public. They're already trying to create, I believe, these contact lenses that have uh, internet capability. Yeah, I know, but remember the Google Glass. That just failed completely. It just dropped. <laughs> that was just a stupid lens, and I actually saw uh, a guy in a theater wearing one when it first came out. Weird. Uh, and back back when it first came out, yeah. and then that was it. He was the only guy I ever saw wearing one. No, nope, it's really strange. So if that didn't work, contact lenses, that's a little tricky. I don't know. I, I, I just don't see. There's certain things. ASICs are a future which people are highly resistant to. Yeah, we're, uh, we'll see, though. I mean, we're, I at that, we're at that new that new age and that new time of existence now. I believe in they, the next five it, years we're going to see some really wild stuff. Possibly. I mean, if the world, let's put it this way, if the world changes, we go into a potential golden age where everything starts to break down. Yeah, sure. Yeah, maybe. Then we finally get that Jetsons future we've always wanted. Yes. And Mark, by the way, I believe there's a call here for you. I think someone had a question. Yes. Did you have a question for Mark? <coughs> yes, I do. Hi, Mike. Hi, Mark. Hi. You probably didn't ask this before. And yes, I'm a skeptic, but I'm going to ask anyway. Okay. Uh, is the flat Earth one? Is it a long, longitudinal or latitudinal flat? In other words, horizontal or vertical? It, if, you, if you look at a globe, so to speak, does the edge run down through the middle of the continent, up and down, or sideways? And two, where would the edges be? What, where would that distortion? Be? Sure, 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 sure. Because For me, and I. Is, as far as the ocean, would it where would it be on a continent where okay. there would be some anomaly? Well, that's just it. When it comes to the map, which is, again, there's only so much we can do because we don't we don't have that much access to the ancient maps, of course. But the closest thing I can point people to is the UN flag. Of course, if you're on a computer right now, you can look up the Azimuthal Equidistant Map which is one of the the USGS projections. Yes. But the UN flag is identical to it. And what that basically means is, is that it's flat, it's, it's flat as a board and the North Pole is in the center of, a, you know, a circle and the continents splay outwards. And then the Antarctic coastline is where it normally would be, except that it's much, much bigger. I Meaning the Antarctic coastline is in all directions, north, south, east, west. In fact, the compass, the north is actually just the center of the map, but the edge, the, the Antarctic coastline is not the edge of the world. The Antarctic coastline is just the beginning of Antarctica. How far in it goes, pff, several thousand miles, the best guess we can tell, at, at the least. And then, then you run into some sort of outside, you know, outer barrier. I don't think it drops off, you know, like, like, you know, drops off into space because that's just predictive programming, or sorry, normal programming where everyone still believes there's space. I believe that that it is literally an enclosed system, like a Truman Show, like a terrarium. The only difference is from the 1998 movie with Jim Carrey is that this thing is much, much, much larger and much higher, high enough that the average person would never even notice. Remember, commercial airline flights cap out at 10 miles, spy planes at about 20 miles, give or take. If this thing, if the roof of this thing is even just 500 miles high, no one would ever fail to figure it out. That kind okay. Of well, now you you sparked something new in me. <laughs> so <laughs> I did not know that. The okay, the the earth okay, the earth is flat. 
Yep. But you've got the uh, magnet sphere around it. What if there is another shield around it that is round, more or less? Is that what we're seeing from? Well, uh, it, okay, really, there was another question I was going to ask. But that's the, definitely... you, you, if you're new to this, you're going to have so many questions, to be quite honest. But okay, it, I was it, just going to say, if the ship is sailing, okay, yeah. to the edge, yes, wherever that Truman Show wall is, that yes. doesn't actually hit the Earth, does it? No, 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 the, no. The trip. If 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 you went out in a boat right now and you had an uh, uh let's say a, a icebreaker, eventually you would reach the Antarctic coastline, which by the way is highly unusual as it is because it is about a 200, 150, 250 foot wall of ice straight up, almost all of it. And if you got on top of it, then you the the altitude starts climbing up right away. Antarctica. For most of it is uh, about ten to fourteen thousand foot plateau of ice that just goes on for all, forever and ever and ever. And then eventually, if you went in and you kept going and kept going and kept going, eventually I think you would reach some sort of Truman Show ish end. Only it wouldn't be made out of plaster and paint. It'd probably be I don't know frequency based, heavy element, uh, harmonic thing. I don't know, but whatever it is, I don't think we can get through it because they were trying to bust through it with atomic weapons. Wouldn't, before. wouldn't somebody, I mean, as many people like Paul, uh, uh, that are on the planet right now, wouldn't somebody found it by now? And no, no, that, that was just it. Once, once they, once the governments of the Soviet Union and the United States figured it out in the 1950s, they locked it down. They sealed off Antarctica with a treaty, an unbreakable treaty. And nobody goes out there. I mean, honestly, the place just has so many natural negative reinforcements. It screams, go away. You're in a boat out there. Eventually, the water drops below 15 degrees Fahrenheit, and you start seeing icebergs. If that doesn't turn you around, you got the, the ice wall. Well, at the Then turn around and go to the other edge. I mean, it's... Eventually, it's all the, the same. The flatter, the Earth can be flat and still be a circle, correct? Yes. Oh, yeah. It's no okay, different so... than... It'd be no different than... 360 degrees, yep. so Antarctica isn't the only, uh, air quote, edge. Well, as far as we can name it, yes. The, well, from what we can tell, the, there is a land mass that literally just encompasses the entire thing. Now, we call it just Antarctica. You know, the, the powers that be may have other names for north, south, east, or west, but from what we can tell, it's completely sealed all the way around if there's channels to get out nobody is uh nobody public has ever seen them but antarctic isn't the only place no no you you might be edges. right well that's just it if whatever's on the outside of this we can only say that it's antarctica because that's all we've got on the map meaning if there is if there is more land mass that circles around the outer edge yeah again there might we, there may be other names for whatever direction you're going so if you go east it may be called sub antarctica or you know if you go north it may be the germans name you know new schwabenland or whatever they decide to name their part of it or 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 uh, or west but whatever it is it's on all sides it's encompassing the entire thing Okay. Like 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 the edge of a I'm dinner. Just, I'm still I'm giving you honest questions. I'm not. Oh, no no no! I got you. I got you. Yeah, I'm if I if I got in some sort of a uh, amphibious vehicle, yes. and just started going straight, and I I would have a uh, a compass. It would be um, a polar compass, not a magnetic compass. It would be uh, a true north compass. Okay, that's fine. And we use that to make sure I'm going straight. Right, and ignore just, GPS, yeah. Yes, and, and my vehicle could go in the water, go in the air for a certain height, and go on land. So I could make sure to go make a beeline to the edge. Got it. What would be at that edge at any point, not just Antarctica? If you got it, if the edge for me is some sort of force barrier. I think it's solid, but at the same time, I think it's... So electromagnetically charged, some sort of force shield, probably with negative physics. If I was going to make something like this, I would make it with, and by negative physics, meaning it's what we do in simulations now, which is you would push back, um, kind of like with anti-gravity. So as you got closer to it, you would start slowing down and you could never actually reach it. And what that does is it stops people from crashing into it. 
Uh, it, it, you know, it's, it's like it's, running a dream. You're you're trying to run in a dream. You just not get there. It. You go. Yeah, it's like it'd be like running into or for for people that don't get the anti gravity part. It'd be like trying to run into a fan. You know, to run towards a fan that was blowing at you. Right, trying to run into a that eventually turned into a hurricane. That eventually you could never you never have enough energy to beat it. So, so and, that, and that's done just for safety reasons. I would need to wear an anti anti gravity suit. <laughs> okay, are you gonna try to get to the end here? It's like what's outside? Oh, what's out? Yeah. What's outside of the barrier? Can we see through the barrier? What we look up and see in the sky is actually the sky, or is no, that no, uh, no. a hologram? I, 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 no, no, I think, yeah, I think we are, look, we are in a giant planetarium. And as you know, planetariums aren't transparent and we can project just about anything we want on the inside of them. By the way, Mark, so. did you watch that TV show Under the Dome? I did watch a little bit of it. I did, uh, written by Stephen King. It started, and interesting. it started strong, but then that second season. Is it still going? I think it already died off. Oh, good. That's yeah. probably good. Well, and that's, by the way, one of the reasons why my, my clues got popular is because somebody wrapped up all the clues and called them Under the Dome documentary. Oh, okay. and people thought it was the making of the television I show. see. Yeah. Go figure. Nice. Yeah. But anyway, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to, to oh, cut you off. Okay. The, uh, it, it, what's outside of this? I, I don't want to get into it too much. For me, it's an unlimited dimension. An unlimited realm just because this world is nothing but, uh, inescapable, inevitable conflict. And I think that I, part of me thinks that this is part, you know, I'll use the Bill Hicks line, part amusement park ride. Oh, we're, I like we're deli- that. We, yes. we deliberately <laughs> asked to, we, we asked to be in here so that we have no excuse. You know, the, the one of the questions that got you, if you ever ask God is why are you let bad things happen to good people? It's like, well, He's off the hook if you actually paid your money and got on the on the ride yourself voluntarily. That's yeah, like what you asked to be. <laughs> um, so the we are inside of a sphere. Inside of a snow globe, for better yeah, luck. La- so that's yeah. the round part. Yes. That's interesting. Okay. Yeah. Well, I, I figured that we were on the holodeck Earth anyway, but well, there you go. I, I mean, why not? <laughs> the, and yeah, if you want to go further than that, which is interesting because the holodeck on the Enterprise, the next generation, which you're talking about, is a perfectly square room yeah. or, or yeah, a rectangle room, depending on which one you look at. Because right. and, and the reason that is is because machines don't like circles. Machines can't make circles. We can make circles organically, but machines can only think in squares and right angles. All right. Well, that's what I thought the grid lines were for. So Exactly. Uh, okay, yes, well, I'm gonna hop you. off. I just, okay. I, uh, I was just, I was more interested in the edge, the edginess rather than I got than you. The yeah, thank you for the call. Okay, really appreciate it. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. I didn't know this was a call show. Oh, well, some people can call in. Some people don't want to. It, it really depends. I, I think some people get a little intimidated. Sure. So they don't always call in. It's quite sad. Yeah, I hear That's why I tell you, it's like, don't be, well, you've got a, a smooth, uh, unintimidating voice. Well, I think some people are a little afraid of me. <laughs> I think they okay. know they they know they could trigger me to say horrible things. So I, that must be it. Yeah, you have that air about you. Yeah, I, I get that feeling. That you <laughs> just snap. Oh, it happens quite often. Watch here. your fingers. <laughs> so, Mark, I, I do want to thank you for being here on the program. I had a blast talking to you about the thank flat you. Earth, and of course, I, I I also must tell you, Mark. Mm-hmm. I, I was being attacked by a bunch of flat earthers saying I was some sort of shill. When? Well, for half a year because I wasn't bringing on anyone who was supporting uh, the flat earth. So I've been. You're an enthusiastic bunch. I've been being attacked <laughs> constantly. So I hope tonight they see that I am open minded and I'm not trying to. You know to... what? I'll endorse, I'll endorse you right here. Uh, and, and the show is officially called, um, End of Days? Yes. End of Days, the Michael Deacon program. I end of days, the Michael De- Deacon program. He is not a, a globalist shill. You can trust him. Thank you. I really appreciate that, Mark. <laughs> really <laughs> no worries. Do. So, yes, Mark, go ahead and plug your website and, once again, any upcoming appearance you may have. The floor is yours. Okay. The easiest way to find my stuff, uh, I'll just make it easy for you. The Go to, to YouTube. If you want everybody in the community, if you want to see everything that's going on there, just type in Flat Earth in YouTube. Set the filter to upload date if you want the most recent or you want the most popular. Just don't put any filter on it at all. If you want to see my stuff, type in Flat Earth Clues. You will find it. Uh, my official website is in, in closeworld.com, but everything's 
link to everything else. Uh, if you want to be on the waiting list for the Flat Earth Conference, or if you want to know if there's going to be any additional tickets, go ahead and type in fe2017.com. And my YouTube channel is called Mark K. Sargent, but don't worry about remembering that name. Just type in Flat Earth Blues, you will find me. Uh, it's just, the, the YouTube channel is just my name. As far as any appearances, I don't know if I'm doing anything public before the conference, but if I do, I'll put it on my channel. Very nice. That's it. Well, once again, thanks for being here, and we're going to have to touch base again, Mark. I had a great time. I had a great time, too. Thank you for having me. Very cool. Well, have a good weekend, and I'll talk to you soon, Mark. All right. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Mark Sargent, ladies and gentlemen, great guy, right? Always fun to talk a little flat earth theory on this very special edition of the Michael Deacon program, Flat Earth Fridays. If you are listening to this on a replay, keep in mind you can listen every Saturday night at 7.30 p.m. Oh, God, I said 7.30 p.m. again. That's 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, folks, on the TuneIn Radio app. If you enjoy this program and want to help keep the program expanding, go to michaeldeacon.com. I profoundly appreciate it greatly. Also, this program completely depends on its listeners. That means you sitting there. Be a friend. Share the show. Don't be too sad now. I'll return again tomorrow night at 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time with Marshall Masters. He's going to be making his return here. He's going to give us an update on Planet X and his new book, Two Suns in the Sky, Who Lives, Who Dies. I'm Michael Deacon. Thank you for listening. And with that said, the world is a mysterious place and life itself is a mystery. Until next time, good night, everybody.